What questions or interactions just don't interest us? <laughs> yeah, so this is different than the previous question that we answered in this session, which was about the questions that we definitely won't respond to. Yeah. This is just questions that, well, I don't it's know, not we're really... not feel drawn to respond yes. to. Yep. It's not because of any behaviour on the part of the person or any, you know, specific uh, uh, unloving thing that they're engaging or the question being unloving or demanding or attacking or any of these other things, but rather just a feeling that, oh, does that topic interest me? Not really. <laughs> so I don't yeah. really want to under, uh, answer it right now. And a lot of that is kind of governed by the priority list that we talked about in session two, isn't of it? Of course. That's why it doesn't interest us because yeah. it's just not really in our priorities or it's not really in our... Yeah, there's a lot of subjects that we find, um, I suppose you could say we find pretty much everything fascinating. Yes. But we do, we do feel that there's some things that are much higher priority to talk about than other things. Yeah. And these things, I suppose you could say, are what we feel pretty low on our priority list to talk about. Although we do occasionally talk about them, yep. they are pretty low on our priority list yeah. for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. And yeah. perhaps we just need to go through some of the examples and, and, we'll and people will get the idea of what's low on our priority list <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. as to why we're not responding to those kind of things. Okay, so... This one's a good one for me too. Questions or interactions where people are fascinated with the metaphysical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and they have no direct relationship to the person wanting to understand God, um, Love, themselves, truth, others, be humble. their environment. <laughs> and in fact, a things. lot of times they're driven by a desire for arrogance. Mm -hmm. They want to sort of feel like they know something that nobody else knows, some kind of wonderful thing about the universe that they know that nobody else knows. And, and honestly, like millions of people know it. No, yeah. Every single person in the spirit world often knows it. There's yeah. billions of people in that category. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, oftentimes this person on earth is saying this wonderful thing that they think is wonderful and we go, it's not wonderful, it's just normal. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't yeah. feel the need to respond to it. We might agree with them, but we yeah. don't feel the need to respond and have a dialogue about something we already know and obviously they, are, they now know and it doesn't seem much point to it. No. Yeah. I often see that people have like a fascination with things that involve spirit interaction or the spirit body sensations and this is almost bigger mm. to them than God, than, than ethics, so. than love, than truth, than anything. It's just sort of this sort of um, something that's made into some grandiose, m mystical, wonderful Thing. Well, that, that's why mo the most often watched videos that we produce are mediumship sessions. Yeah. Like, it's because people people are not interested in connecting to God most of the time. They just have this fascination. And a lot of times it's not even a belief. Mm. They sort of have just this fascination. What's going on there? It's sort of like, <laughs> there's this whole conversation and that person thinks that they're talking in the spirit world and maybe they are. And I don't believe they are, but maybe they are. And isn't that wonderful? <laughs> you know, like, it's not really even knowledge mm. it's just a fascination mm. of something that potentially is imaginary or magical yeah and we don't see spirit interaction as magical or imaginary no it's just a fact of life yeah um so we don't see a, like i feel a conversation that i had with a spirit about a certain topic is no different than a conversation i've had with you or or somebody else with a certain topic and and like what, why would there, why would we feel there's anything special or unique about the interaction with the spirit? Mm -hmm. So anything metaphysical as well, generally just, it, it's, the, it's to do with things that people learn on the fascination of the universe that we live in. And most of the things in God's universe, of course, are fascinating. Mm -hmm. But in the end, there are more important things and there are less important things. Yeah, yeah. And the more important things are love-based yeah. and the less important things have little to do with love or have very minor factors of love involved in them. Mm. Um, and in fact, a really complete and thorough understanding of them comes once there you... is an understanding of love and a connection to God anyway. And so it's sort of like putting the cart before... Or... Well, it's like the old statement that I made in the first century, you know, if you seek first God's love, all of these other things will be added to you. Yeah. Like, why talk about all the other things when if you seek first God's love, all the other things you'll know? Yeah. Like, it doesn't seem to make much sense to yeah. me to put like you say, the cart before the horse. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're, they're questions that don't interest us that much. No, you know, sometimes they're interesting or sometimes we're talking to an audience who that's the only point of contact that they have 
and they've not considered anything else, so we talk about it then. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're talking to an audience who are just fascinated about that subject and have no other fascinations, so then we feel like, oh, well, you know, that's what they want to hear about, so we might talk about it. But it's not something that we feel driven to talk about much we're not, ourselves. We're not going to dedicate hours and hours of our life, major creative time of creating Divine Truth teachings on those kind of subjects. No, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Questions or interactions mm -hmm. where we already know the answers and the person talking to us already knows the answers. This happens quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but there's just a feeling in the person who's asking the question that they just kind of, they want to um, get a nice little feeling about, oh, we both believe this one, this same thing and we both... Or they want to have a feeling of confirmation. Yeah. Or they want to have a feeling that, oh, look what I now know. You know, yeah. or they, daddy. you know, there's, yeah. Yeah, daddy, daddy, look what I now know. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing how many people treat me like <laughs> yeah. daddy. It's yeah. a big problem. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, must, I must be looking pretty old nowadays because <laughs> oh, it happens no. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, you know, those kind of things don't attract us very much. It's basically two people scratching each other's back saying the same thing, and, and we don't get much involved in that kind of discussion. No. Well, it doesn't <laughs> sort of doesn't help anyone grow. It's no. not really, um, yeah. It's there's... often driven by some addictive emotions yeah. too, you know, addictions to have approval or acceptance or to have agreement or to have somebody come along and say, yeah, you did a good job there, isn't it wonderful, or, you know. Those kind yeah. of addictions. Yeah. Um, this is another good one. Questions or interactions where people want to give us all of the details. So they don't want to just tell us that they went to town in the car. They want to tell us that they went to town and the road was gravel and then they went over a pothole and the car was blue and the sun was shining and then there was a bird and then they got to town. And then the thing they want to talk about happened when they got to town. And usually and that's the, a little part of the <laughs> yeah. conversation. The thing they actually want to ask the question about is like a tiny part of the whole thing they said. And sometimes they write pages and pages like about the sky being blue and the panel yeah. being red and the, yeah, yeah, and the yeah, yeah, wall yeah. being bright and yeah. whatever. Yeah. And, and they get to the thing and you go, do you even realise that you just buried yeah. your question in yeah. a whole heap of superfluous data? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, it, this comes from an, another addictive emotion, actually, where people want you to share in every single tiny little aspect of their life. It's an addiction. That's why Facebook and, and what's the other, Twitter, Twitter and all those yeah. things got created because people want you to share in every little thing that happens. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and often they send us an email like that where they want us to share every little thing that happens and experience every little emotion along with yeah. them as we're reading through their life story. And honestly, you've got some major addictions when yeah. you send us a, something yes. like that. Yes. And, and it's very hard for us to read it. It is. And it's quite um, a demand on our Time. It's sort of a sucking feeling again. Of and, course it is. And, yeah. you know, again, I've I've definitely had that addiction with you, haven't I? Just, oh, I realise this. Oh, I realise that. Oh, I had this experience. And I said, and get to the point. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> or even just that as I as I do progress and, and start to grow, you know, in my, my own sense of self and yeah. my own relationship with God, there's not this addictive desire to have another person share, share in, in every discovery. In and fact, also, it feels quite demanding. But now. also the other thing it doesn't acknowledge is the truth that the other person can already feel your emotion about it anyway. Yes. And and this is another thing that I find is people have little understanding of ourselves and particularly of myself yeah. that I already can feel their emotions. So therefore, I already feel the experience. As soon as they mention, oh, I went to the shop the other day, I can feel the entire experience. Yeah. But they don't have to share it with me. Yeah. They just need to talk about what it is they, they noticed and what it is they would like answers to or yes. whatever. Yes. And that's all they have to do. I'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't have to go along with the ride with them. And to be honest, I feel it's a very addictive thing to be involved in wanting other people to ride along yes. in your life. You know, it's like it's a it's a desire to seek empathy from people mm -hmm. and, and it is actually an addiction to seek mm -hmm. empathy from people when they don't have to have empathy for you. And even if they did, the, the more developed a person is, the more they will have empathy for mm -hmm. you. But they don't need you to tell them like they will already feel it. You know? Yeah, and it is a beautiful thing, I feel, as I become more sensitive and open and less in that addiction, I immediately start to feel that you can feel 
uh, what I'm feeling and that you do have empathy and care for me. Whereas before in that addiction, I was trying to elicit a, a feeling that you had those things for me and I couldn't feel it because I wasn't sensitive and I yeah. was demanding it. And I remember early days in our conversation, sometimes you'd say, I'd say, look, Mary, you don't have to say what you're going to say. I already know what you're feeling. She'd say, what? And Mary, you would say, what is it then? <laughs> right? And i go, this is what you were going to say. Blah, 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 blah. She goes, oh, oh yeah, yeah, so it was. <laughs> it's sort of like, and then it's like, next time, what is it then? Go, so it was. And after a while, you get to trust that actually, yeah. no, the person is far more in tune with you than you realise. And your demand for their in tunement is not even you can't even feel that they're in tune yes like you can't yeah. you're not even feeling them yeah like so i had a conversation i know with Igor the other day about some technicals and he he couldn't feel that i was really getting him yeah. and so he wanted to tell his whole story and i'm going but i already know the whole story this is you know yeah. like i get it like you don't have to tell me anything yeah. but i feel like i have to you know it's like <laughs> it, and i want to tell you everything i want I to know. tell you yeah. and, and yeah. that feeling that I, I get that feeling from a lot of people yeah and and that feeling, firstly, doesn't acknowledge that I obviously can feel them. Yeah. Secondly, it doesn't acknowledge, too, that there is an addiction involved, and that is of wanting the person to share the experience of your joy or your satisfaction yeah. or your yeah. discovery or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and these kind of uh, feelings projected, obviously, are addictive in nature, and so it's very hard for me to respond to them. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I have begun to have just some experiences of that where I'm on the other side of it now, where I can feel the person starts speaking and I know what's the in, emotion driving them. And emotion, the details... A lot of times the story. Yeah. And, and you there, and it's like, yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and get on with and it, if so. I interject at the beginning and say, look, <laughs> this is the principle of love that I know is being ignored, they still feel like, no, you don't get it because you haven't heard the whole story. Yes. When I'm going, no, I do. No, 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 I get story, it. Yeah. Um, it's just that I can feel it now. Yeah, and yeah. before I needed you to tell me the story. And this is the yeah. thing is that when you do things God's way, everything is a lot more rapid. Yeah, it's awesome. Because isn't everything it? is, is rapidly understood because you can feel the emotion coming from the person. So you rapidly understand everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. and, and people who are not in that state, don't understand the rapidity, how fast how everything fast. becomes. Yeah. And so quite often you're 10 steps ahead of a person because <laughs> you're feeling the emotion from them of what they're going to say yeah. and feeling the words of what they're going to say before they've got out of their mouth, Yeah. before those words have come out of their mouth. And it's very off-putting, I suppose, for the person because they yeah, feel like they've got to go through the laughing. whole thing. But, <laughs> but it is. the reality is if you both can communicate that way, the, the, the how fast you can resolve situations intensifies hundred, hundreds of folds. Yes. Like you, you, you can go from spending an hour discussing something to two minutes discussing mm -hmm. it, one minute discussing it, and both of you knowing with emotional satisfaction that you get and understand the entire thing. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's just wonderful. Yeah. And you can think, you think about it. If you're in that state, you can process ha huge amounts of information yeah. in very short amounts of time. Awesome. Which is cool. awesome. Yeah. 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 So we'd encourage those people who try to tell the long <laughs> stories involved in the whole thing to realize that once you work through your soul based issues and you really connect it to your soul, you'll know when somebody gets you. Yeah. You'll know when they don't. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what words come out of their mouth or their facial expressions, you'll know either way whether they get you or don't and this is a beautiful thing that does happen with us like we still have exchanges where i don't trust mm -hmm. I, i'm be, i'm beginning to trust very much that you know where i'm coming from and i'm beginning to feel that you feel that but also but you're starting to trust that i'll tell you when i don't know that's yes you, you, like yes. i often say uh mary no i don't get what you're saying now yes. <laughs> like, yes. and 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 if I'm not saying that to you, then you know then you, I do get it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's that um, that feeling where okay, now I I can trust that he knows where I'm coming from, and he'll tell me if not. Mm -hmm. But there's still sometimes where I feel like no, I have to tell you because you're <laughs> not getting it. And then there was a third thing that I that related to what you were saying, and it's just gone out of About my head. About the experience. Like wanting to share the experience no, with me? No, it was about, um, oh, it's gone. Sorry. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. Um, 
but it was something related to when people ask us questions and send us emails and and just um, trusting in that process. But yeah, a lot of times I feel from them that they don't trust the fact that we can feel what they're saying to us and understand it clearly. Yeah. And then when we respond, they think, oh, I didn't expect that response. So they mustn't have understood what we're saying to them yes. in the first place. Yeah. So then, then they say the same thing back to us again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. we often have done that in conversations in the past. Where yes. I say, Mary, I understand what you're saying. And you'd go, and you go, no, he doesn't understand. I'm pretty sure he doesn't understand. So you'd say exactly <laughs> the same thing. He needs to know this detail. Then he'll know that it's a different scenario. Go, no, I did get it. You know, like yeah. I did get it. What you don't get is I got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you can't feel that I got yeah. it, right? Yeah. And then they say it again. And, and we often get that in email exchanges where we say back a response, the person acts like we mustn't have understood the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we did. Yeah. You just don't understand where you're coming from most of the time, right? But but okay. we did understand the question and we can feel it. So yeah. we do. They did understand the question. We're giving you a response based on what we feel from you. Yes. And and you you don't get that, right? Yes. So they think, oh, they didn't understand. So we'll send it back and we'll say it in a whole different way, but yeah. about the same thing. And we tell the same story again. Yeah. And then after about three frustrating attempts <laughs> of doing this, and us for going, no, we already got that. Our original email applies. No, it doesn't because blah, yeah. blah, blah. we said, no, it, our original email applies. You just don't get the answer yet. You haven't even given enough thought to, to understand it yet. Our original email still applies, right? Yeah. And, and in the end, a lot of people just walk away frustrated. Well, I, I don't know what's going on there, but I still don't get it. You know? <laughs> and that's because the soul is not engaged yet. Yeah. Yeah. The soul, when the soul is engaged, you'll understand that we're feeling your feelings. Mm -hmm. We're responding to your feelings. We're, we're not going to share in your experience mm. because we don't feel any need to share your experience. And in, if you have an emotional demand upon us to share your experience, we already feel you're out of harmony with love. Yeah. Your experience is your experience. God created you to be a free thinking, free feeling, free acting individual so that you could learn to have your own experience. Yeah. Not so that I can have your experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is what, you know, this is what, why we're not that drawn to answer those kind yeah. of questions. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. And it's a great way for people to work through those, you know, those addictions and the feelings that underlie them. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. <laughs> it's a funny subject though because it is, I could talk about it all day. Yeah. Because, because it, it, it's, it's funny, so isn't much. it? When we're, when you can feel me and I can feel you, the speed at which we can do all sorts of things is like intensely increased, increased. by factors of multitudes, <laughs> you know. And and yet when that's oh, not the case, it can take hours. It take, can take an hour just to work out the fact that you haven't even asked the right question. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or you're trying to give an answer that the yeah. person already knows what you're trying to say and you think that they don't yeah. have all these kinds of things yeah. and, that, and so the more you grow and tune in to the feelings the more you'll understand about what's going on around you you yeah. will know more about people not less yeah. you will know more about what they're trying to say you will know more about their life without them even telling you you once you become a celestial spirit you can walk up to the person and know everything about them without them opening your mouth. You don't, a celestial spirit does not need to hear your story because <laughs> yeah. he feels a whole lot of it. He yeah. already has, he's absorbed it emotionally already. Yes. He's already been loving enough to absorb your whole story emotionally. Yeah. That's how loving he is. Yeah. And, and, and so he doesn't need to hear it again. And, and no matter what he hears from you, He's still not going to be able to hear it as good as what he can get it from your soul directly and actually experience it emotionally. Yes. And yeah. once you understand that all the words coming out of your mouth are really superfluous most of the time mm. when a person is capable it's, of feeling, yeah. then you start realizing that you can be a lot more succinct and, and <laughs> with, with your words. The only reason why we spend a lot of time explaining things very down to the nth degree yep. is because the listener is not in that state. That's right. If they were in that state, we don't need to do it. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's exactly right. So it's a loving thing that we do it. Yes. But, but it, you know, it's not something that attracts us, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're attracted to our conversations with our mates in the celestial spheres. Yeah. And uh, who, who can feel straight away what's going on. Yeah. And respond straight away to the feelings. Yeah. It's just wonderful. It is. It's yeah. great.
That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so other things that don't really interest us. Um, so, well, really questions or interactions that don't result in the growth of the people that we're speaking to or other people who will listen or watch the discussion later. Yeah, like somebody had a breakdown of their car the other day and they're not willing to discuss the reason why it occurred emotionally or whatever. Like they just want to talk to you about how they broke down and they went here and they went there and they got this happened and that happened and everything. Honestly, it's like a whole heap of detail about somebody's life that is not my experience and there's no need for me to even feel about it. Yeah, and that probably leads to the next sort of thing, which is just things that are conversations where people want to talk about details that are quite materialistic or just um, by the by, the weather, the the roads, the just things that Politics, are, um, the changes of a certain, like, honestly, there's a lot more going on on the planet than what the newspaper or media or anything anybody can share with you. Mm -hmm. And once you understand what's really going on and once you can feel it, you're not as interested in reading about it because mm. almost everything you read is false. Mm -hmm. Every, almost everything you read doesn't match the emotion that, that you can feel even from the person you're reading it who yes. wrote it. Yes, and mm. I find that those things, they, they focus very much <coughs> what feels to me now to be quite a narrow view of what is truth, what are solutions, what is um, the scope of the problem even, what are the, the issues that are actually creating the problem. It's usually um, a very, very shallow mm. view of the world's uh, issues and problems affairs yeah mm. current affairs yeah you know th there's so many or even an individual's current affairs <laughs> yes yeah yeah uh, even most people have very little understanding about what's really going on in their personal life in a global sense based on an emotional consideration of it yeah and and so you multiply that by seven billion people and of course the whole world is in that state yeah. and when you can feel all that emotionally and everyone has the capacity to do it um, with development, you know, particularly with the reception of God's love, then there's no need to discuss it all or, you know, rave on about it or yeah. postulate or theorise or philosophise yeah. or yeah. so forth and so forth. Yeah, yeah. It is either real or not real. Yeah. yeah. The not real doesn't even get discussed anymore. Yeah. Because you know it's not real. Yeah. You can feel it's not real. Yeah. You can feel from God it's not real. And, and I'm really interested in speaking about solutions to what are global issues, but real solutions, not, uh, you know, not... Not the philosophies of men. Yeah. Who are just postulating concepts and ideas that have been postulated a thousand times before if you look through history. Yeah, and they've never worked. And they've never worked. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, we've touched on this also just people who are self-involved, who are lying, who are exaggerating, all these kinds of interactions don't really interest us either. They're not based in truth. Well, they're, again, addictive yeah. interactions on their part. Yeah. And yeah. most, we could probably lump all of these things into addictive. When you're, when you're wanting an interaction with another person that, that has a whole heap of addictions on your part, mm -hmm. then if the other person's sensitive emotionally, they can feel that you're not being honest with them. Yeah. They can feel you're not, you're, not, you're not being fully disclosing. They can feel when you're not being open. They can feel when you're not being transparent. They can feel when you're not being humble. Mm -hmm. They can feel when you're being a bit condescending or a bit arrogant. They can feel all those things. Yeah. And, and of course, they're going to be very sensitive to that. Yeah. And so it's highly unlikely they're going to respond to those particular things. Yeah. Now, if they feel there is some bigger picture, big, some bigger subject that's worth discussing they will focus on that yeah. but which we do but yeah. but if a person sending us an individual email with those demands it is like <clears throat> it's like we said it just doesn't interest us very much yeah mm. and the final thing um that we wanted to talk about is just people we're not that interested in engaging with people who are very pessimistic and they don't have any desire to shift from that mm. cynical pessimistic stance within themselves yes so Pessimism then, and cynicism are emotions that are very uh, preventative emotions with regard yes. to love and truth. Yeah. They, they do prevent the flow of love and truth into the soul. Mm. They're driven by deep fears and anger inside yeah. the individual that needs to be released before anything real can be felt. 
yeah. and and also before anything real can be shared. And yeah. so, you know, it's very hard for us to have a strong desire to overcome a person's pessimism or mm. overcome a person's cynicism before we share something with them. Yeah. We feel that they need to go away and work through the emotional reasons why they're pessimistic or, cynicistic, cyn- and, or, or cynical, cynical yeah. and, and, and deal with the emotional reasons first so that they can hear what's being shared. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit concerning, I think, that cynicism is also almost become fashionable on the planet and it's almost viewed now as realism and yes it's not it's, realism at all no from god's perspective it's totally unreal yeah. in fact yeah. like god is a positive god definitely never c- c- cynical, cynical and never sarcastic yeah. never cynical never pessimistic mm-hmm. god has no reason to be pessimistic because everything god has it, it, everything God has designed is good. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. It, everything works exactly as God designed it to work. So there's no cynicism on his part. So, so when a person is cynic, c- cynical or you know sarcastic or belittling, pessimistic. pessimistic, and all those negative types of emotions, it's because they want to justify that condition to themselves. Yeah. So they either don't have to act, or don't have to do something, or mm-hmm. don't have to see something different, or don't have to love, or or just or grieve. accept truth, yeah. or just grieve, or yeah. just not want to feel an emotion or whatever. Yeah. And they need to see that. Yeah. And if they are unwilling to see it, then there's little that can be done to help them get beyond that point. Yes. Of you know, of their negative condition. Yeah. 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 So I understand why people are cyn- cyn- cynical living in the world we live in, but I don't understand why people are cynical with God mm. because God didn't design the world we lived in. He designed the laws that govern the interaction with the world we live in. Mm. And when I say he didn't design it, he obviously designed the earth, but, but he, he designed the laws that govern the operation of the earth and, and if those laws are engaged in a loving manner, we would have no disease, no illness, no problems, no wars, no, mm-hmm. no anything painful on this planet. Yeah. And in fact, most of us would live for thousands of years instead of tens or hundreds. Yeah. And, um, and all of our problems would be resolved. And God knows all that. That's mm-hmm. why God's very optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he, he, he also realises that most people on earth are living in a place that, are, that is completely unreal, mm. that is completely like absorbed in fear yes. uh, without the ability to perceive what the possibilities are and so god while god allows that condition to to be satisfied through our own desire he obviously won't agree with it mm-hmm. and and we find when you become closer to god sorry i'm just going to have a cough <coughs> <coughs> yeah when we become closer to god we're not drawn into this pessimism and cynicism either, you know. Mm. And I know when I first met you, you were quite very, pessimistic, weren't you, babe? And, very cynical. And, you know, now I can feel optimism from you. Yeah. And you can see that it's only by releasing certain emotions that you've become more optimistic. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of fear. Yeah. Mm. Fear. Yeah. Um, and false beliefs and grief, really. Grief yes. about... Um, and it's hard to share an optimistic teaching, which is, a, which is about God, God's love, God's truth, yeah. the way it changes your life, transforms you, transforms your soul, living forever, you know, yeah, in that yeah. state of happiness. It's hard to share a, such an optimistic <laughs> teaching with, a people, with people who are cynical and yeah. depressed and, and pessimistic. Yeah, and, and I suppose rigid in the desire to hold on to that yes. as truth. Yes. And I think that's where I was. And when even I argue you. for that truth. Yes, yeah. arguing for it and saying, no, that is the truth and we have to be realistic. Yeah. And that, I mean, that is such a painful state to live in. Yeah. But it, for, for anyone to try and teach me in that state, well, you it's know, very hard. so hard. Very yeah. hard. It's exhausting, actually, on the teaching yeah. side because yes. you're having to overcome all these terribly negative emotions yeah. before you can share anything with the person. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, these kind of emotions all exist in the hells. Mm-hmm. And the only way we can, we can let ourselves out of the hells yeah. is by, by actually feeling and experiencing and releasing those emotions yeah. from our emotional condition. Yeah. And that requires going through an emotional experience. And, and unless we're willing to go through the emotional experience, if we're so pessimistic and cynical, it's going to be very, very difficult for us to hear any truth yeah. and certainly very difficult for us to love. Yeah. 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 Mm. 
Okay. Well, that's a that's a good little summary of just the kind of interactions that don't really interest us. No, you know, it's not like you know. Sometimes we're drawn into them because yeah. of the circumstances, but you know, it's sometimes they're a bit sort of twiddly thumb <laughs> type of, you know, where they're, yeah. they're not like they're not in. We engage them. Obviously, there's sometimes when people have sincere issues that are raised that are who have these kind of issues, mm -hmm. and we are often, well, it's rare for us to not be engaged with people we meet. And particularly for myself, like every person I meet, I'm focused, they, I focus my attention on them. I feel mm -hmm. what they are feeling. I focus my attention on, on them. But, uh, but honestly, not, not every person's projections back interest me to engage. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. person themselves, yes, that interests me. Yeah. But if the person is trying to not be the person themselves, then it's very hard to remain interested. Yes. Because yeah. I'm just getting a false. Yeah. A false. Yeah. There's, the feelings are completely different to what's being presented. Yes. And yeah. when a person remains rigid in the scope of, of like, wanting to hold on to facade or wanting to remain in, you know, direct conversation in a very limited way, mm. then it's hard to stay interested in that kind of conversation. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're in, we're, we enjoy personally when we come to recreationally, yeah. we enjoy personally the conversation and experience with people who are optimistic and yeah. not cynical. They don't yeah. feel hopeless. They feel hopeful. Yeah. You know, these are all the qualities of people who have received some of God's love. And, and enjoy the experience of receiving it and enjoy the change that it's imposed upon their life through yeah. the experience rather than people who go, oh, it's all terrible, it's all bad, <laughs> and it's all terrible, and look what I've got to do, and it's all painful. Like yeah. even we feel that you can feel your personal pain without imposing it upon others. Yeah, you certainly can. and perhaps that's, uh, we mentioned about when we met how just I felt very much uh, very cynical and very rigid in that yep. but something that I needed to pass through in order to get out of that was stopping projecting that outwards mm -hmm. on others as a as a rigidity and just to allow myself even to be in company that is optimistic to 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 stop trying to control conversation and just let the more open more loving more truthful conversations bring up those feelings in me mm. rather than trying to control and direct my external circumstances to agree with these emotions in me. The, mm. A turning point for me was just opening up and letting those conversations happen and it helped me to trigger those feelings. And once I was humble enough to feel some of them, wow, well, then my outlook changes. I become more positive and more truthful yes. just naturally. And also you become a happier individual too because you're not driven by pessimism or yeah. cynicism or, yeah. or sarcasm or any of those other emotions that tend to drive. And even today, like you said, uh, people tend to feel uh, hypocritical even. You don't even think they're cool anymore to feel no. those things because yeah. you realise that they are just false. Yeah. They're, they're not anything to do with God's reality. Yeah. They are the world's reality, I agree, yeah. but they're not God's reality. Yeah. And once you become closer to God, you don't feel them as your reality either. We did a, a, a radio interview in England mm. a couple of years ago and um, we came into the studio and the man there who was interviewing us was he had the strong belief that he was very well educated and very kind of hip, and up, cool. hip up to the moment yeah. and he was doing the world a service by exposing us terrible and he had, stuff. he had a million twitter followers and well, i had none yes <laughs> and it's pretty hard to have one when he tried to account, <laughs> shame you about the lack of twitter followers and as if that was some kind of you know <laughs> statement about your validity as a human exactly um yeah and i did i he was very it was very nasty feelings he had towards us but uh, but it, it was also very sad i felt very sad, sad because him, yeah. i understood like where he was coming from and mm. and it's a sad place, place that, yeah. that he's living in there it's a very um what i would classify as a it's it's like trying to peer at he the heavens from the hells. Yeah. You've got all this mud and yeah. darkness and, you know, grey emotion and feeling to project your way through in order to see yeah. the heavens. And yeah. when you're looking at the hells from the heavens, it looks completely different, of course. It's, yeah. it's all to do with perspective. Yes. And when your perspective, emotional perspective has changed, 
because yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah. Progression in, in in God's way is all about your emotional perspective changing. Yeah. And when your emotional perspective changes, you no longer feel as pessimistic as a person who has the perspective coming from living in the hills or having a background of still having those emotions yes. of, 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 you know, fear and anger and resentment and harm and hurt and grief and all all these emotions which cause your perspective to be highly distorted from God's perspective. Yeah. And in that state, from having been in it, looking to heaven is just a feeling of wanting to judge it and... and Not even that. Most of it can't... Most people from that place can't even see it. That's right. They're They're literally blind to even seeing its possibility, let alone it. Yeah. And that's the reality of the hellish condition. And the hellish condition is a result of all the emotion that we've got contained within us still that we're not allowing ourselves to experience. And so obviously, you know, we want to help people from that place. But obviously people who are unwilling to move from that place cannot be helped. You know, you have to first recognise that that place has problems and yeah. that you want to have a different solution to your problems before you can move from that place. Yeah. And we find that a lot of people in the world uh, are cynical, uh, sarcastic and you know pessimistic, but they have, as you said, no desire to move mm. from that place. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like living in the hellish condition trying to trying to see everything around you while at the same time wanting to remain in the hellish condition yeah which which is very very difficult to help yes and and almost having an arrogant viewpoint of saying that the hellish condition is, is reality s- is reality is superior to people who have hope and things like that oh, well yeah they look down upon people who mm. are optimistic because they believe the person who's optimistic is not being real yeah. They believe that that they're psychotic or something, <laughs> or stupidly or stupid. naive or something. Yeah. You know, terrible judgmental yeah. feelings. So, and that's a part of the hellish condition to have judgmental feelings towards people who have a more optimistic viewpoint of life. Mm. And and what we're suggesting is that when you're sitting in that place, it's very very hard for you to even conceive that that heaven exists, mm. let alone it being real. Right. Yeah. And it's also very hard for you to conceive that what you're feeling is not real. Yeah. But rather just your feelings about it. Yes. You know, it's very hard to conceive that. Rather as well. just mud obscuring reality. Yes. It's saying, no, the well, I, mud is reality. <laughs> yeah. It's like putting on a pair of muddy glasses and then looking around your life and going, that's real. Yeah. And, and somebody comes along and goes, no, you could just take off your glass and you go, no, no, no. That's unreal. If yeah. I do that, this yeah. is real. Yeah. And so you leave the glasses on. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. what they're doing, but yeah. they don't even realize they're doing that. No. And that's the sad thing. It is. Sad. So that's why, you know, when we see people in that place, it's, it is sometimes sad to reflect about how far they have to go before they'll even accept any truth. Mm. Um, mm. There's, a, there's a lot of resistances they'll have to overcome. Yeah. Which mm. are, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a whole other discussion we Yeah, we need to. Yeah. That's a whole emotion. Probably suits the emotional. The emotions and emotions feelings. Emotions and feelings yeah. section that does. Yeah. That discussion yeah. about how. And maybe we need to just take a note about that. Just yeah. how, you know, the perspective of reality is severely distorted by the emotions that you have within you. Yes. yes. And once you've released those emotions, you will look at life completely differently than you currently do. You, you, you will also perceive reality as being completely different to what you expected it to be when you're in that state. Yeah. So we need to talk about that at some point. Yeah, so let's do let's that. Let's do that. Yeah. But let's finish off that <laughs> sure. there. Yeah. <laughs>